I've been actually, you know, performing and singing most of my life from uh, a, a young lad, you know, growing up in New York. Early periods when I, I used to go to the Apollo Theater in New York, New York City, and I used to watch groups like the Drifters, you know. I never knew that one day in my life I would be singing with such a group like that, you know. My name is Butch Leek. I'm a, a singer, writer, a producer, a photographer, <laughs> a graphic designer. I do so many different things. I'm, you know, a multifunctionalist, you know, kind of person when uh, it comes to these things. Every corner in New York City, we had a vocal group, you know. We used to sing, you know, harmonies in corridors and in <laughs> hallways. And, you know, that, that was uh, kind of what we did as uh, uh, kids. The first time I was actually brought up on stage professionally, well, not professionally, but I was in the audience and I had my taste of trying to do something. Smokey Robinson of the Miracles you know, asked me to come up stage. I was shy and I, wow, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, uh, so I, 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 you know, I had the bug. Uh, New York was going through a very bad period at that time, you know, with drugs and things uh, that were going on in the neighborhoods. And uh, it was a, it was a kind of an ugly, ugly, you know, uh, period for me. And uh, so I really wanted to get, you know, to get away. Make a long story short, you know, I was off to the military and then I decided to go to Vietnam. And I was uh, wounded and um, that was a very, you know, pivotal point in my life. And then one night I was in a place in New York City, it was uh, uptown uh, New York in Harlem, a place called Allen's Alley. And we were having a few drinks and it was singing and this and that. And then there was a guy down at the other end of the bar, you see, and um, and he said, hey, the, this guy can hit a note. <laughs> and he came down and he said, hey, what are you doing? And I said, don't I know you? Uh, yeah, it, but he happened to be a guy that I knew from the early days, and his name was Bill Fredericks, you see? And, and Bill said, what you doing? I said, well, hey, I just got out of the military war, you know, and I'm really looking for a job, you know. And he said, looking for a job, huh? Would you be interested in singing? I said, singing? Singing what? Singing with who? He said, the drifters. I said, the drifters? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, two days later, I found myself in Boston, New York, on stage with the group. Performing, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, it was, it was crazy, you know. It, it was all, it was an audition and everything at the same time, you know. Uh, and it's funny because I look back on some of those old pictures because when we were up on stage, you know, we used to work with two mics, you know, the lead mic and the mic for the background. And uh, of course, two guys, uh, it was uh, Bill Fredericks, another guy called Don Thomas. And we were singing. And of course, they were kind of blocking me out. I'm in between them. And uh, and I'm really kind of miming everything I'm doing. <laughs> that was somewhat the dream come true, you know, and I was accepted to, uh, you know, perform with the group. And I remember after the show, I said, well, where's everybody going? You know, well, we're going out to, you know, to have a party and this and that. I said, great. He said, great. No, he, he, here is a bunch of records. He came out with like a little duffel bag and said, you go upstairs and you have to learn all these songs. I said, I have to learn all these songs. I said, okay. Over a period of time, I wind up learning mostly everything that the Drifters did and they didn't even know it. <laughs> but that was my beginning with the group. <laughs> In 
in the early days, you know, uh, after joining uh, uh, the group, we found ourselves, you know, working in places like Art Lebeau's in uh, uh, Hollywood, California, um, the Sahara Hotel in uh, Las Vegas, um, Waldorf Astoria in New York City. And these are just some of the uh, prestige, you know, venues that uh, uh, we used to work. Then we started spending a lot of time outside the country, um, you know, the Far East, Hong Kong, you know, Japan, Okinawa, um, Philippines. Um, so we used to do extensive, uh, you know, um, tours outside the country. Vegas was very interesting because we began, you know, performing in the Sahara Hotel in the lounge of the Sahara Hotel. And, um, of course, when you work the lounge, you might be working four, five, six shows during the course of a night, straight into like five o'clock in the morning, you see. The interesting thing about that was the Drifters was the kind of group, or it was an entertainer's entertainer. So when the main showrooms would close or they would the the big stars they would come down to hang out all night to watch us. So we might have any anybody, you know, from the world of entertainment that were uh you know that would be in there. I mean, we had people like John Wayne <laughs> sitting in there sometime, you know, um, Gladys Knight in the Pips. And uh, we had all kinds of people, you know, um, you know, that uh, that would, uh, you know, come to see us. So that was very impressionable to me because I, I was I was meeting some of the, you know, uh, greatest people in the world. Uh, after 19... Uh, 75 going into 1976 it started splintering and with groups you know it's just typical of a lot of groups you know for various reasons you know we begin to peel off myself I like I said I left at the end of 1975 and I decided to go solo and like Bill Fredericks he left in 1954 and Grant left in uh, 1954 and we all went solo. The group went on. At that time, um, a guy called Joe Blunt came in and he replaced me and uh, uh, Clyde Brown uh, replaced Bill Fredericks. Um, it went into another big, you know, spinoff of members straight on up through to the 90s and, you know, beyond. It was many changes. So the guys looked at me and said, well, what do you think we're going to do now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I sat down, I thought about it and I decided to, uh, you know, pull everything back together. But of course, you know, there were trademark issues and various things. Um, we were no longer the drifters and, uh, uh, but we were everything else. <laughs> we were the original people that sang the songs, you know. Um, and we were the Golden Age members, you know, of the third Golden Age. And uh, half of us were still uh, living at that time. And and so I said, well, we, I got to figure out a way to, you know, to capture what we did without having the issues and the problems. I decided to f form a company called the Drifter Legends Clubhouse. And the idea was uh, um, to uh, create something exclusive and to give back and tell a story, you know, that people weren't telling about the members you know, that came over this six decade period of, you know, of Drifter music, you know. There have been over 65 members or more that have come through the Drifters lineup, almost a man a year <laughs> when you think about it. And so I, I decided to sit down and, and, you know, and capture all that 
through writing. So the Drifter Legends Clubhouse actually started as a publishing entity. You know, I was set up a publishing company and I wanted to to tell the story of the history of its members and so on and so forth. Uh, so I set out to do that and I, more or less I started off with a magazine called D Legends Universe, which was a, a magazine series that I said, you know, why not tell a story about uh, the members throughout the years, also to tell some of the story of, you know, the history of music and many of the people that I've, you know, uh, came to meet and associate with and, you know, great rock and roll singers, blues singers, whoever, you know, I just wanted to write about, you know, uh, these things, but centralize things around the Drifters, you know, and that's what the Drifter Legends Clubhouse was to be about. I always wanted to write a magazine, you know, put a magazine and publish a magazine. And I said, boy, this is going to be a lot of work. But, you know, I said, you know, I can do it. You know, so I became everything. I was the editor. I was the photographer. I was, just, I was the writer. <laughs> so that's how I got the magazine up off the ground, you know. Then I, I st you know, started writing ideas for a book, you know, and uh, then I came up with an I idea for a book called Anthology, The Drifter Legends. And that became the first book that I wrote and put together. And, and then later on, the, the companion book to it uh, on Broadway, um, a pictology of the Drifter Legends from 1953 to 2016. So in all this, I began to, you know, uh, uh, do this and I started also doing a lot of blogging. I know I like to write about a lot of things. I mean, you know, I'm into politics, I'm into this and that, but what do you know, you know, more so than anything? And I, and, and I really thought about it and I said, you know, I knew everything about the this drifter thing, you see. I had stacks of papers on everything that the drifters ever did. And so I brought that into the fold and it, so it gave me all the, you know, the tools and am, ammunition that I needed to uh, to write the books and to start putting stuff out all over the place and the blog. And people began to start seeing, you know, this thing about the Drifter Legends Clubhouse. So, you know, you go online, you know, I, I remember the management company said, every time I go on Google, I see everything about you. You're all over the place. I mean, what's happening? You know, this and that. What is this Drifter Legends Clubhouse? I mean, every time anything that comes up about the Drifters, you're you're there, you know. <laughs> Well, that was the idea, <laughs> you know, I wanted to, you know, I was trying to create something else and, um, and to get away from that problematic issue uh, relating to the name and so on and so forth. And that's how that came about. And, and then finally, I sat down with the guys and said, hey, it's about time now uh, to think about going back on stage, but in a different capacity. That was the you know, the start of the Drifter Legends Clubhouse and uh, that's brought us up to this period. Well, of course, the future for, you know, for us is just basically, you know, performing and getting back out there to uh, let everybody know who we are, um, to do new music, you know, for myself, Per se is is you know I I do want to do more writing so I'm working on a number of books matter of fact five more books right now in in the can uh, I'm open for many different things you know it's just uh, every everything starts with an idea everything starts with a story you know whatever the story is whether I come up with it or someone else comes up with it uh, you know let's look at it and, and and let's do it I've always dreamed about doing is a uh, as a testimony to the history of its members and uh, the things is to eventually maybe one day uh, to to create a venue or a, a night spot, do something like the the Hard Rock. Remember the Hard Rock Cafe? I, I, but just around the history of what we did, you know, um, it's something that it's there, you know, and I have a tendency when I put it in the back of my head for some 
reason it comes forward and a lot and most of the things they seem to materialize hopefully you know i can do it before i leave this earth <laughs> so to speak i'm a visionary you know i'm really a visionary i'm the one that can really see at the to the end of the tunnel so you know the sky's the limit